Hi, welcome back. This is the final segment of this little series I'm making on what contemporary Christians can learn about worship from those who have gone before us. Today, we'll be uh, exploring a little bit of the rule of St. Benedict. Maybe you've heard of Benedict. This is not the one from Much Ado About Nothing by William Shakespeare. This is the Italian saint who lived from about 480 to 543 or 47. Not that much is known about his life, but what he is well known for and still remembered and honored by so many is this book he wrote that is we call The Rule of St. Benedict. This is a book of precepts written for groups of monks who are living together in community under the authority of an abbot. Now, Perhaps you wonder, um, why would a book for monks be appropriate for you, uh, a contemporary Christian, maybe living with your family or with some friends? This has very little relationship to you, perhaps, on the surface. And I totally get that. Um, and also, we can be a little afraid because it's called a rule. And as a rule, we say, well, we don't have rules. We have freedom in Christ. Why would I want to follow a rule? You're not supposed to add anything to the book. So that's, that's a little troubling to some. Although it is called a rule, we could maybe better call it a ruler. It is a, a measurement. It's a tool. It's used to help us grow in spiritual maturity into people who live as the body of Christ together. Uh, this book could be classified, rather than a, a list of rules or regulations, uh, instead as wisdom literature. The, the rule has lasted for so long par partly because there's a certain element of flexibility to it. Primarily it seeks to teach wisdom and moderation and humility and to help people seek the Lord. This is from the, the preface, for instance. What, dear brothers, is more delightful than this voice of the Lord calling to us. See how the Lord in his love shows us the way of life? Clothed then with faith and the performance of good works, let us set out on this way with the gospel for our guide that we may deserve to see him who has called us to his kingdom. So there's a certain aspirational hope in how God might use the rule in our lives. Uh, the rule is formative. Benedict writes, Therefore, we intend to establish a school for the Lord's service. In drawing up its regulations, we hope to set down nothing harsh, nothing burdensome. And if you read the rule, you'll find out that for the most part it is true. There's so much flexibility within it. Uh, I want to focus today on only one aspect of the rule, and that is the aspect of what's called the hours. Uh, in Benedictine monasteries, 1,500 years ago and today, uh, the members of it follow the hours. They pray and worship and chant and read scripture at set times. Often it's about seven times a day. And if you read this section, you might notice that it's very particular. These psalms are read here. This alleluia is said here. You start off with this. It seems very regulative. But it's not, again, because Benedict invites the listener to do this. We urge that if anyone finds this distribution of the Psalms unsatisfactory, he should arrange whatever he judges better, provided that the full complement of 150 Psalms is by all means carefully maintained each week. So it doesn't really matter to him how much that you sing or chant which song on which day. What matters is that Every single week, the community together is reciting and singing all 150 psalms. That itself could be a wonderful challenge for us. I, I wonder what we can learn from this. What can we learn from communities that historically have gathered in worship together seven times a day, that chant or say the psalms all 150 through? every single week of every single year. Um, I think sometimes we have a tendency to make a debate in our mind about worship in regards to quality and quantity. We think, oh yeah, uh, I have a good experience. I worship wholeheartedly on Sunday mornings. That's good. It's quality time. And that is good. But there's also a sense, and, and we hear about this in 
parenting, if, if you read stuff about parenting, that it's not just quali quality time that matters, it's also quantity time. And through the practice of monastic and Benedictine communities of having quantity time in worship, having quantity time in prayer and reading scripture, that they are continued to be formed as people who can hear and see and follow God's call. This is not only for Benedictine monastics. Perhaps you've had an opportunity to go to a contemporary monastic community, um, whether it's something like the Simple Way or Koinonia Farm in America's Georgia. I spent some time there a few years ago, and one of the things I noticed and participated in was regularly cessations of work. Work would stop, the bell would ring, uh, the farmer would take off his hat and people would pray. And it was done to remember the constant presence of God with us, that God is always the source of all our life and light and love. And so it's this continued tuning and retuning ourselves to the source of it all. And this, my friend, can be a, a wonderful way that God forms us. These rules aren't rules that are a straitjacket. These rules are rules just like you make sure that your plant gets enough sunlight or it will die, right? It's not, that's not a rule to stifle, that's a rule to help live. And so these rules too, especially the practice of the divine hours and the guidance toward humility, these are rules that will help us to flourish as God has planted us. I hope that you have some time at some point to spend a little time with Benedict's Rule. I've put a, a link below if you want to read it online right now. And again, we remember together the presence of God with us, the presence of the Holy Spirit in the church through the ages, and the hope that we have in Christ. Goodbye, my friend. Thank you.